Hi guys, welcome to On The Tea, the show that brings you all matters golf. We are coming to you from Vet Lab Sports Club where we shall be hosting the third edition of Victoria Cup, which is a golf duel between Kenya and Uganda. We are your hosts, Lucas Maranga. And I'm Vincent Rongombe. And today on the show, we shall meet a very special golfer who's part of the Kenyan team. And you will get to see how he has grown through the game and get to know why he's a special golfer. We'll also meet a greenkeeper who takes care of this course. But first... Vet Lab used to be a nine-hole course previously, up until around 2005, where we did the second part of the course. Now we are at 18 past 72 golf course. We've been trying to safeguard some of the tee boxes to ensure that the guys get a proper surface to tee off from. So we've cordoned off a couple of tee boxes, a couple of areas on the tee boxes, just to ensure that when the guys come for the Victoria Cup, everything will be in order. Victoria Cup uh, started three years ago. Uh, this is the third year. It came out of common interest between us, Kenya Golf Union, and the Uganda Golf Union to have uh, an inter-country. Uh, you know, Kenya and Uganda, we've been playing golf for a long time, and uh, uh, we have this uh, library between Kenya and Uganda, not only in golf, but also in other sports like rugby. <laughs> Victoria Cup uh, is an event between Kenya and Uganda that is played in the Ryder Cup format that began three years ago. So this year is the third one. Last year was in Entebbe, uh, the year before was Mothaiga. This year it's uh, here in Nairobi at Vet Lab where we are. And we are looking forward uh, to this duel that is proving to be very exciting between Kenya and Uganda. Our Ugandan counterparts are very excited. They are coming in large numbers with even my fans to come and cheer them and to play. So it's, it was formed just as a feel-good, brotherly love kind of thing, event between Kenya and Uganda, and it's achieving that purpose. The cup was donated by Moses Tanui, who's a legend uh, athlete. He had won it some years back in a marathon, and uh, when we approached him, he was very generous to donate to us, and we really thank him for, for that. I think 2016 was memorable. It was an inaugural event, and you know we we decided to host it, and it was it was a big test for us. And also the level of competition was very high. Uh, we won by a point. Kenya won by a point. It came down to the last match and the last shot. So it was it was very very interesting to to watch the team coming down the 18th hole and winning it uh, on the last hole. My vision is to see the tournament uh, gain uh, its rightful place in our golf calendars. I like the way they can, both countries are taking it seriously, the way the teams are preparing for the tournament. I think it's going to be a good tournament. Keeping us in the map is always something that we are always looking forward to. We hosted a qualifier for the Kenya Open and uh, we are slowly getting ourselves out there getting the course to be in a shape that can even host the Kenya Open. So we're pretty excited about having the Ugandan team coming here to match up with our guys from the Kenya team. We have around uh, three guys from Vetlab who are in the Team Kenya. Apart from just the players coming to play, we also have the fans who will come from Uganda. And the same happened last year. We had Kenyan. Uh, golfers uh, traveling with the, with the Kenya team. So it also it brings uh, about uh, the inter-country, it fosters the inter-country relationships, it helps in improving our game of golf. People build new friends, you know, golf is a game of, you know, making contacts. So it also helps in, in our own 
our development as a as golfers. Well, you see, as we have said uh, many times, junior golf is the future of this country. And I personally, as chairman, feel we have given it more lip service than actual, than actual doing. And so having an event where by almost 30% of the players are juniors is a step in that direction. We have to expose these small boys and girls to, to international tournaments and the platform of such high ranking so they can build not just their golfing muscle but even their mental game which is key to win, to win at an international level. And so if it were up to me, we would even have more juniors playing in these uh, tournaments. But it's a good start. Previously juniors used not to be having many slots, it used to be one or sometimes even none. But we'll continue having more events and accommodating more juniors so that these guys can play the game in a better uh, way and also they can represent the country. And like I said, without juniors uh, growing up in the game, then the future of golf is bleak. The quality of golf is definitely going to improve because of this tournament and other tournaments that the uh, national team is exposed to. Well, we're expecting some, some high quality golf, really, to, to take place at Victoria Cup. Like I said, it's the top uh, amateurs in the country that are taking place, that, 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 are, that are going to play. We are also going to have uh, the top juniors that are going to play. And also the Uganda team are sending their best uh, inter uh, golfers from, uh, from Uganda to represent. So at an amateur level, it's the top amateurs, the elite amateurs in Kenya and Uganda. And that alone tells you that we'll have some fine golf. Let me also ask all golfers in the country and out of the country to, who can come and find their way here to really attend this event uh, that's going to happen on the 25th, 28th of uh, July. We are going to have a good time not just playing golf, but we're going to, we intend to have some good party in the evening and some good activities going on. And so, yes, I really would want numbers to come because without numbers, then uh, the party isn't too lively. Please do come to Wet Labs and enjoy the hospitality that we give at Wet Labs. You're all welcome. Thank you. A great golf course doesn't just happen. We need to have somebody to take care of it, somebody to take care of the grass, and make sure that it's in top condition, like we have at Vetlab. And guess what? At Vetlab, it's a girl. She's one of the two girls in the country who take care of a golf course. And we'll be meeting Maureen Murugi in a short while. So today we are um, just inspecting the course, looking around the fairways. I'm done with the greens today, but the fairways look good. We normally mow this twice a week, just to maintain the levels that they are. If you just look around, we have what we call the main fairway. We have the intermediate. We also have the roughs. The roughs are meant to punish golfers who hit a rogue shot. We have two types of hazards in the golf course. One is the bunkers, two is water hazards or water features. So you realize that the water hazard is quite close to the green. This is meant to be punitive. It makes the hole harder, the hole number 10 a bit harder because if you if you overshoot from the tee, you might get to the water and if you undershoot when you're in the middle of the fairway, you might just get into the water and that costs you two strokes. Uh, we go ahead to have a look at some bunkers. So here we have a bunker. Like I explained before, we have two types of hazards in golf courses. This is a sand bunker. We can have a sand bunker or a grass bunker. So you realize that the, the bunker, if someone overshoots the green that we have just behind me, the ball gets into the bunker and that's really punitive to the player because getting out of the bunker is not a small it's not a, an easy thing to do so yeah that's it a green side bunker we have fairway bunkers that we are going to see as we move on how many you take an outdoor job so i took an outdoor job because i like moving around that is why i took green keeping okay yeah and uh, so did you go out and study about green keeping or is it just a love for the grass? 
I studied environmental horticulture, which basically deals with tough management, trees and all that. Mm. So it's basically like management of the environment or the golf course or such or football pitch or anything. I studied grass. What's oh, the <laughs> scientific name for this grass? Agrostodis tolonifera. It was just a joke. I didn't think no. you'd know it. Oh, <laughs> hey, we, have, we have to know them because okay. they are very different. Uh -huh. What's the difference between this grass and that grass? This is a cool season grass. Okay. It does well in a very cold season like we have right now. It's Kikuyu grass. Okay. This is bent grass, uh -huh. zero, zero, 007. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And what does it take, I mean, to get yeah. grass looking like this? Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. What maintenance is uh -huh. mowing, uh -huh. test management, irrigation, weeding, weeding mm -hmm. by hand. How is the golf course right now? Uh, I'd say the golf course is meticulous uh, right now. It's looking good, uh -huh. more so because of the rains we've had and the cold weather we have right now. Mm -hmm. The course is superb. Okay. Maureen, what keeps you awake at night? Some golfers will play and we pitch in so the green. So that is very it's very injurious to the green and if it's not repaired within the first three to five minutes it takes it takes about a week or two to to get here this is a steam feature okay. it's used to measure the speed of the green okay. when it moves that fast it means that the greens are quite fast and the distance is the speed of the greens in the steam And if you consider on this that we have heavy traffic like say competition days, mm -hmm. we'll have about 200 or 180 to 200 players mm -hmm. in the course. Mm -hmm. You can imagine if they don't all repair. Yeah, if all don't repair the pitch market, the green will be at a bad condition. Yeah. Wow. Doreen, mm -hmm. thank you very much for you're doing a great job and we look forward to having the Kenya team here at Santa One of the Kenya team players is Isaac Makoa. He plays right here in Vetla. We'll join him and his brother Jeff Kubwa, who will be taking us through what they do to prepare themselves. And one of the things about Isaac, he's one of our special players. You'll get to see why. Come with me. I'm here with Jeff and Isaac. Both are good golfers. Jeff is a professional golfer and Isaac, an amateur golfer, will be playing in the Kenya team for the Victoria Cup. Now, probably you could just give me a bit of background. How did you guys start playing golf? Uh, I started playing golf at a very tender age. Uh, at Eldorado Golf Club, um, our father used to work there as a receptionist, so we were born um, in that environment. We used to watch people play. So we got interest, and uh, there's uh, one volunteer who gave us uh, a junior skin to start with. Um, yeah, that's how we started. Okay, who started first, you or Isaac? Um, there's a bigger brother of ours who started first, actually who uh, motivated us to pick up the game. Um, then I started next, then Isaac followed. How long uh, have you, you know, been playing golf? How have you found it so far? Six years now. You represented Kenya at the Death Olympics. How was that? It was very good. It was very good in my age uh, number five. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time you're working with a team or have you played with other teams before? It's my very, very first time. How is it working with the team Kenya against Uganda? This is my, this is my very first time, so I'm hoping to play well and uh, do well. Have you 
experienced any difficulties because of hearing disabilities playing this game of golf? There's a bit of uh, difficulties in co with communication with the fellow uh, players, but apart from that, golfers are friendly people and uh, I'm enjoying it. What would you say to people who have hearing disabilities? What would you say to them about the game of golf? I'd like to encourage them and uh, let them know golf is not an easy game. But all in all, I'd like to encourage them to uh, start playing golf. Despite his challenge, he has represented Kenya at the Deaf Olympics. Watch out for him. He's a very determined player. Thank you very much. Really appreciate. Jeff Asante San. All the best, Isaac. And Zebe Kamwanja, team captain wa Uganda. Mulikulaba on the T. Quest Sports. Pap! Tulimaje. It's not going to be a ride in the park for Kenya. We're in it to win it. So uh, let's watch how these next three days go. Kenya has won this event twice. The first time we won it by a shot at Mothaiga. Last year we won it by two shots. So who knows? This year we win it by three shots. So <laughs> on the third edition. But we are looking forward and we are happy that our Ugandan guys are here. They're having a good time. They've settled down. And so it's going to be a good event. Day one was exciting, it was really good. Um, proud of all the players, performed exceptionally well. And yeah, plenty of confidence going into tomorrow. Interesting performance, I've seen interesting performance from uh, guys like Duva, Edwin, Danny, Mike is here, Saik. I mean, most of them have uh, been quite solid. I, mean, I didn't expect that, but uh, it happened. Uh, a bit challenging because the uh, greens were pretty quick and also pin positions were not the best place, pretty tough. I uh, will basically approach it the same way we did today. Uh, there will be no changes actually because it turned out to work very well for us. Day one has been such a quite disappointing day for us. We didn't expect this to happen, but well, in golf, anything can happen. You can come on the day when you're good and end up, ends up being a bad day. I think we're going to take this confidence into tomorrow and yeah, we can rack up some good points. What has given us a big challenge today may be the greens have and the pin, posi pin positions. They are not all that forgiving. They were so tight, but that's what gave us a big challenge. And maybe the flags, because we are playing in different flag sticks, because we're used to yellow, red, and white. But now today, the whole course, there were white flags. So that was a very, very big challenge to us today. Yes, the greens are very much tasking I mean, in terms of speed, uh, pin positions and all that. They are quite uh, difficult for us as well because most of our players, they don't play here. So they're also struggling a little bit. So that's what has happened to us today. But nevertheless, we're expecting to give it the best tomorrow because today we have scrapped zero point out of eight matches. But we're expecting to come back tomorrow like a hungry lion hunting for what to eat. So we need to be calm and uh, just keep the mind focused on that. In our next episode, we'll be talking to the players who have been participating in this Victoria Cup and find out how they feel about it. Until next time, let's meet on the tee. It's your honor, Lucas. Thanks, Vincent.